Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> My name is Katie Fuller. I'm Andrea Santos. This is a presentation of Experiment 1, Introduction to Spectrophotometry, um, the Azura Spectrum of Cold Divide. The objective of this experiment was to determine the maximum wavelength of cobalt chloride, generate a standard curve, and use spreadsheet software to analyze the data obtained to determine the concentration of a solution of cobalt chloride. For this experiment, the materials used were two cubettes, a graduated cylinder, eight 18 by 115 millimeter test tubes, and rubber stoppers, deionized water, 0.15 molar cobalt chloride solution, and the SPEC-20 spectrophotometer were also used. The spectrophotometer was calibrated first at 400 nanometers by using a blank sample. The sample was a cubette filled with deionized water. The blank was put in the SPEC-20 and the left knob was turned until the screen displayed 100% transmittance. Then, the max wavelength was determined by reading a sample of cobalt chloride, increasing by 25 nanometers, and recalibrating with the water each time the wavelength was changed. The max wavelength was determined and recorded in Table 2. In this table, the percent transmittance and absorbance values were recorded for each sample of cobalt chloride with ver at varying wavelengths. Using this data, we determine the maximum wavelength. This figure, figure one, is a representation of the absorbance spectrum curve as derived from table two. It shows the relationship between the absorbance and the wavelengths of the cobalt chloride as was measured in the experiment. By looking at this figure, it is evident that the maximum wavelength was 500 nanometers. Then, um, continuing on with experimentation, eight solutions at various concentrations of the 0.15 molar cobalt chloride solution were prepared in the test tubes. These solutions were each placed in the spectrophotometer and, and after they were transferred into the cubettes. Um, at 500 nanometers, they were each read for percent transmittance and absorbance values. These were then later recorded in data. This table, table three, shows the data including dilution information, concentration values, and the percent transmittance and absorbance values of each dilution of 0.15 molar cobalt chloride that was used to construct a standard curve. Figure two is our graphical representation of the data in table three. This is the standard curve that was established by plotting the concentration values against the absorbance values. The graph demonstrates a positive correlation between the two factors. The equation used for the E-value is comparable to the equation for slope. 4.9052 was the E-value calculated based on the standard curve. The formula used to determine the concentrations of the cobalt chloride solutions was M1V1 equals MV2. M M V or M2V2, I can talk today, um, uh, which is the molarity of the first times the volume of the first equals the molarity of the second versus or times the volume of the second. Um, an example of this would be test tube number two, which was determined to be 0.15 molar times two milliliters equals M2, which is what we're solving for, times five milliliters. This value was determined to be 0 0.0604. This table, table four, shows the concentration and absorbance values, as well as the E values of each concentration using the following equation A equals ELC. Um, continuing with experimentation, one test tube of the cobalt chloride solution with an, at an unknown concentration was obtained for each group member. Um, the percent transmittance and absorbance values for each unknown were then recorded using the spect spectrophotometer at our determined maximum wavelength. This table, table 5, shows the, no unknown, the number of unknown solutions and the percent transmittance and absorbance at the max wavelength, which is 500 to calculate the concentrations of the unknown solutions for the percent transmittance and absorbance values that were read in the spectrophotometer, the equation E or the equation A equals E times L times C plus B was used. For example, unknown 68 was determined as follows: 0 0.470, equal, which is our A value, equals 4.9052, which is our E value, times concentration, which we're solving for, plus the y-intercept value of 0 0.015. When the equation was solved for C, um, it was found the concentration was 0.094 molar. The equation was used again to determine the concentration of unknown 68. It was found to have a concentration of 0 0.08 molar of cobalt chloride solution. Um, Those spectrophotometers that we used um, gave us a, a, a value for absorbance 
It can also be calculated from the formula A equals 2 minus log of the percent transmittance. One example from the data set is A equals 2 minus log of 89.6. Um, this value is equal to point, um, 0 0.048 for absorbance. Based on the results, the percent transmittance and absorbance are inversely proportional to each, to each other, as shown by the equation A equals 2 minus log percent transmittance. The, the, uh, the relationship is not entirely over uh, The next question we were asked is, is our uh, maximum wavelength that we determined supported? Um, we found the data, is, um, the data supports that our value, which was 500 nanometers, um, as the lambda max was supported because it demonstrated the highest sensitivity to absorbance. Um, this value is also supported by a source from Davidson College and within the visible light spectrum, which is directly related to color. Uh, furthermore, the solutions that we used of copper chloride uh, were red in color. Um, when red shows for humans, um, it usually indicates that green light is being absorbed, um, and green light is absorbed at 500 nanometers. For question three, based on the results, as concentration increases, so does absorbance. That is, they have a positive correlation. This can be observed without the spectrophotometer by noting that objects of a higher concentration tend to be a darker color, meaning they absorb more light. The data that was derived also reflects this point. For example, when we read the absorbance values for the unknown samples, specimen number 67 had a lower absorbance than that of number 68. When the concentration was calculated, it was determined that number 67 had a lower concentration than number 68. In addition, the R squared value that we found was 0 0.9962, and it shows that the model is reliable as a trend for concentration and absorbance because it is very close to one. It's not exactly one because there is some sort of error. Um, the concentration, as she stated, of 67 was 0 0.080 molar. The value of concentration for unknown 68 was 0.094 molar. Um, the absorbance and concentration values were both larger in specimen number 68 than in specimen number 67. This makes sense because um, the standard curve that we established early in, on experimentation was a positive correlation between the two values. Um, it is also in support of Beer's Law. Based on the objectives and the observations that were made in experimentation, it was determined the max wavelength was 500 nanometers. All of our data complied with and supported Beer's Law.